because this could save someone's life. Um, I'm a nurse practitioner. I am licensed and certified. I am not on the front lines. I have a friend in New York City who's on the front lines. And for her safety, she cannot come out and say these things. So I am her voice. I'm not going to name names of people or hospitals for the safety of those involved. Um, but this is her account, okay? I am her voice here. I'm gonna tell you what she has told me. She wants this to get out. Now, I'm sure this is not the case everywhere. I, I'm confident. I, I have friends that are in other places. They're on the front lines, they're in ICU. And it's not like this everywhere, but in New York City right now, in some of the hospitals, this is what is going on. People are sick, but they don't have to stay sick. They are killing them. They are not helping them. She used the word murder, coming from a nurse who went to New York City expecting to help. Patients are left to rot and die. Her words. She has never seen so much neglect. No one cares. They are cold and they don't care anymore. It's the blind leading the blind. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I was on with some nurse friends of mine and we were discussing different medications that could be used to potentially help people. Doctors who were reporting around the country that they were using a combination of medications that were helping people. People were not dying when they were on these medications. They were getting better. Those medications are not being used in hospitals in New York City. What is happening is that they're putting people on nasal cannula. If they require more than six liters of nasal cannula, they get intubated, they go on the vent, or they get traked if there's not enough vents. They don't get high flow, no non-rebreather, no non-invasive ventilation, no CPAP, no BiPAP. They're on a closed system, the ventilator, versus a CPAP or a BiPAP for fear that it will spread the virus. Which, by the way, I know a nurse in Florida who was fired for exposing that about CPAP and BiPAP and patients being put on the ventilator, like straight away to the ventilator to be on a closed system. The patients don't know any better. They don't have family with them. There is no one there with them to advocate for them. So they are scared and they give consent. The ventilators have high PEEP, high pressure, which then causes barotrauma. It causes trauma to the lungs. Dr. Uh, Sidel, Cameron Kyle Sidel, a few weeks ago, put out a video. He's in New York City, and he put out a video saying something is not right, like we're not treating this correctly. We're doing something wrong. This doesn't make sense. They pulled his video from YouTube, and they took him out of ICU because they couldn't have one doctor going against the grain, going against their protocol. The protocol is propofol or some kind of sedation because they're on the ventilator and IV antibiotics. There's no hydroxychloroquine. They're not using that combination with Zithromax. They're not using zinc, vitamin C, high doses of vitamins A and D. They laugh. This is what she's told me. They laugh at that. She says, this is a nightmare. It's out of a horror movie, and I don't want to be a part of this. There are people who are a full code, and yet, if they crash, they're not doing compressions because it will spread the virus. Full code, not doing compressions. Family is not there. They have no one to answer to. No one is being held accountable. A code was called and no one came. So sometimes they're not even resuscitating people. Again, left to rot and die. They're not given blood because we know that the blood is not oxygenated in these COVID patients. We know that. There, there are doctors all around the world sounding the alarms. These are the drugs that work. This is the pathophysiology of the, de the disease. This is what's happening. And for some reason, it's not changing. Even though we know, some of us know what's going on, nothing is changing on the front lines. They stay in the same PPE, all shift, except for the top pair of gloves. So two pairs of gloves, or I don't know, maybe more than two, but they're only changing the gloves on the outside. Gown, mask, whatever else stays the same because all patients are COVID patients. So if it's a COVID floor, it's all COVID, but it's not because some of them are rule out COVID. So even if they're rule out COVID and they're not COVID, they're gonna get COVID because they're using the same PPE all shift and they're carrying that contamination to all the patients. They're not changing their PPE. 
They're not going into rooms. So they're running long tubing into the room so that they can manage the tubing from outside of the rooms. So if they're not going into the rooms, that means they're not assessing the patients as frequently as you would be otherwise assessing your patients. They are not doing rapid result tests. You're lucky if you get results in five days. Okay, this is coming from my friend who is in New York City right now on assignment. Who went there to help and this is what she's finding. It's a horror movie, she says. Not because of the disease, but because of the way it's being handled. She said, we need help and people are sitting there waiting in the hotels. Money, I guess, being paid, it's being paid for by FEMA and yet they're still understaffed. And there are hundreds of people, hundreds of nurses in the hotels waiting to be called onto a shift. So there is manpower enough if the goal were to actually save people, but resources are not being utilized properly or to full capacity in a way that maximizes the patient benefit or improves the outcomes. The records and charting are crap. And now some of these hospitals in New York City are probably crappy on a good day. So you add in the fear of COVID and the fear of the whole pandemic and forget it. So you're dealing, if you're in a crappy hospital with crappy nurses, let's face it, all those nurses have worked with crappy nurses before who don't care. So now you add in this, forget it. And they're having people do things that they can't do. So maybe things that they're not proficient in. So maybe a nurse who's not familiar or comfortable with using a ventilator. And it's that figure it out mentality, figure it out. These patients are critical and they're crashing, figure it out. So nurses are being celebrated as heroes, right? We see how like the fire trucks and, and the police are like lining up and practically having these parades and celebrating them as heroes. And don't get me wrong, I'm sure in some parts of the country and other ICs, I have friends that are working on the front lines in ICU and they are good nurses. And some of them are heroes, but we have nurses being celebrated as heroes who are killing people. They're not heroes. And they're being brainwashed to think they're doing something great just by going to work because they're brave enough to go to work. Well, what are you doing at work? You're certainly not saving people if you're not even, you're not even running codes. You're not even going into patient rooms. You're a coward. You're hurting people. You're killing them. You're contributing to the problem. I know I'm going to get hate mail for this and that's fine because people are dying who don't have to die. Again, there's no family there. So no one's being held accountable. And once these people get intubated, they're being scared into giving consent to be intubated. And then for a lot of them, it's over. And there's nobody gonna be held accountable. And there's nobody looking out for them. They are completely by themselves. There's like a total lack of critical thinking. It's out the window and people are scared to speak up and one person alone isn't going to change the overall culture of a hospital or a system or a city. Like I said, Dr. Cameron Kyle Seidel's video was pulled from YouTube and he was pulled from the ICU for sounding the alarm and going against the grain. So people are sounding the alarm. It's just not changing anything, apparently. So what can you do? Buck the system. I'm really fortunate I don't have any family in New York City that I personally have to worry about. If there are people that you are worried about, or maybe it's not even New York City, maybe you're in another city that's being really hard hit and you're just hearing really bad things coming out of that city, buck the system. Something is wrong in the system. So go against the grain. Request records immediately. Records, transcripts, immediately. If there's a medication that you want your loved one to be given, report it as an at-home medication and demand that it be continued. That's just a tip from inside the system. If you want a medication to be given, you've got to report that it's an at-home medication and that you demand that it be continued. Your loved one is not gonna have you in there advocating for them once they go in, you're not allowed in. The only reports that we're able to get of what's going on are coming from the inside and people are afraid to speak out. People have lost their jobs. Do not give consent for intubation if you don't want to be intubated or your loved one to be intubated. Demand non-invasive or less invasive ventilation methods. As Soon as you give that consent, you might not come out of it. Now, in some cases it might be appropriate. We just don't know. We know that it's being used inappropriately in a lot of cases and that the ventilators are making people worse.
Please share this video, make it go viral. People need to know this. This is the truth of what's going on from my nurse friend who's in New York City right now on assignment. This is murder, she says. People are being murdered and no one cares. Horrible care.